Mobile Task Force, Kappa 42. Angel reporting in. Hey, howdy, hey guys. I know it's been a while since I've posted, and hey, what do you know? I missed SCP Sunday, but I had a good reason. But you probably don't need to know it right now. Maybe I'll let you in on it a little bit later. Anyway, there's been a large influx of interest in my debriefing, so I thought I would give you a one that's a little bit out of the ordinary. All right. I don't really have much to say as far as an introduction for this one because it doesn't really apply to too many people who are probably going to be listening to this. So let's go ahead and get started. Item SCP-468, also known as the Abacus. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. A buffer area of one kilometer is to be maintained around SCP-468-2. Individuals found inside upon initial foundation acquisition may only exit with the permission of the overseeing level 4 researcher. All foundation personnel entering for purposes of observation must exit two hours after entrance. SCP-468-1 is not to be moved from SCP-468-2. It is to be contained within a standard locked containment unit. One video camera inside the unit is to monitor SCP-468-1's movement. The unlocking combination is held by the overseeing level 4 researcher. Description. SCP-468-1 is an abacus with dimensions of 20 by 7 centimeters in near perfect condition, with no missing beads or sign of disrepair. Its beads, despite the lack of any obvious motor or driving system, will move automatically. Periods of movement are interspersed by periods of rest, which usually last three to five hours. SCP-468-1's beads will often perform basic arithmetic operations, though this is not always the case. SCP-468-2 is a former farming village located in the Chinese province of Jingisu, with an area of about 2.3 square kilometers. It is presumed that the previous owner of SCP-468-1 lived within this village. Research Site 113, which houses all personnel assigned to 468, is located 3 kilometers from 468-2. Roads, houses, and other sufficiently large man-made structures inside 468-2 will shift their positions as SCP-468-1 itself moves. Movements invariably results in the formation of geometric patterns. Usually, roads lined with houses will move to form rows and columns. Other patterns that have been observed include basic circular and triangular patterns. Researchers have recorded a relation between arithmetical operations done by SCP-468-1 and the movement of SCP-468-2. For example, SCP-468-1 moving to multiply 10 and 32 resulted in a 10 by 32 grid pattern, with outlying houses forming a perimeter around the residual grid. All sufficiently large animals, including horses, dogs, cats, and human beings within SCP-468-2 are subject to its effects. During periods of SCP-468-1's rest, affected subjects will travel between structures. Only SCP-468-2's roads will be used to travel. No two subjects will ever travel in different directions on the same road. The speed of travel is invariably 2.3 meters per second, with one pace taken every 0.6 seconds. Mathematical functions are often performed with affected subjects acting as counters. Animals susceptible to SCP-468-2 effects begin to display symptoms 2.5 hours after entry into the village. The initial symptom is all loss of all complex mental functions such as basic coordination, language skills, and reasoning. After three hours inside, instinctive and reflexive actions such as fight or flight response are forgotten. After 3.5 hours, brain activity reduces to an essentially comatose state and only the knowledge of how to walk is retained. However, only a certain number of affected individuals actually take place in group movement at any given time. If enough subjects are removed from SCP-468-2, such as the number of affected individuals inside is less than 7, all movement will cease. It can only resume once members of the same species as the removed subjects are placed inside 468-2. Despite their inability to consume food or water, all subjects seem to be in perfect health. Removing SCP-468-1 from SCP-468-2 causes all activity within SCP-468-2 to cease, though affected subjects do not regain lost mental capacity. Given the research opportunity that would be lost, this is prohibited. Alright, so this basically sounds like a crazy case of OCD, right?
Well, I can say I've witnessed this thing firsthand, and it's pretty darn impressive. I can't say much about its abilities, because, well, let's face it, I can only disclose so much on the internet. This is the internet, after all. I seem to forget that sometimes. Doc keeps reminding me, but who listens to Doc anyway? Anyway, I'm gonna go to bed, because I'm finally starting to feel healthy again, and I don't really want to mess that up. Doc gave me some kind of painkillers, and, um... I'm feeling kind of snazzy. So I'm going to go catch some Z's, and you guys stay safe, stay alert, and stay in line.